Hey guys, what's going on? Justin Lawrence here, back again with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about the three secrets to creating perfect skin tones for your portrait images using Photoshop. Over the past three and a half years, I've spent countless hours, blood, sweat, and tears trying to figure out the best and most efficient ways to create beautiful yet natural looking skin tones. And today, I'm super excited to share all the Photoshop secrets and techniques that I personally use so that you can achieve perfect skin tones in your own work. And so that's what we're gonna be covering in today's video and much more. So without further ado, let's dive into Photoshop and get started. And so the first secret to creating perfect skin tones is to begin by fixing any kind of unflattering shadows and underexposure on the skin, thereby revealing more texture and detail in these areas and making it much easier to create perfect skin tones in later steps. Now the reason why you see a fair amount of shadow and darkness, not only in Cynthia's skin, but also in the photo at large, is for the simple reason that I decided to underexpose this image in camera by a couple stops so as to preserve as much of the precious detail and texture in the highlights as possible. This is often a necessary step in a high contrast scene such as this, where the model is placed in front of a bright window in a dark room. Okay, so let's get into actually fixing this underexposure by creating a regular curves adjustment layer. Then using the hand picker tool, let's select a neutral mid-tone section on Cynthia's skin and drag it up slightly to brighten up the photo. From here, let's create a second curves adjustment layer, except this time let's add in two dots on the curve, one on the shadows and one on the mid-tones to lock in the brightness in these areas. Next, let's increase the brightness in the shadows by dragging this point upwards, all the whilst dragging the black point to the right slightly to darken the very black pixels so as to maintain our photo's contrast and definition, such as in the eyebrows and in the outline of the eyes over here. Now, for a very important step, let's click on the layer mask and hit Command-I to invert it, thereby no longer making this brightening effect visible anywhere on our artboard. And then let's use the paintbrush to paint in white over the shadowy or underexposed areas on our model skin alone. This will effectively isolate this brightening effect exactly where we want it to be on our image. Now let's go ahead and hit Command J to duplicate this layer, effectively doubling the supplied effect. Now, I realize this doesn't look very good right now as we have resultantly lost a lot of color in this area, but do not fret as coming up in secret number two, I'm gonna reveal exactly how to fix these gray slash washed out areas on the skin in two simple steps. But before we do that, it's important to note that by brightening up the shadowy side on our subject's skin, we can now clearly see what's going on in this area. In fact, we can now see the detail and texture all throughout Cynthia's skin, making this the perfect opportunity to apply some skin retouching to get the skin looking nice and clean and smooth. Now, for the sake of time, I won't be going into my skin retouching process today, but I do have a separate video on the topic, which I'll link on screen now. Alternatively, I do have a full portrait editing and retouching course, which I'll link in the description down below. All right, so moving on now to secret number two, it's time to follow up our shadow recovery process with a selective recoloring process. In doing so, we're gonna reintroduce some beautiful color back into the specific areas of our model skin that we have since brightened up, which are now looking quite dull and lacking vibrancy. And to do that, guys, what I would recommend you do is create a selective color adjustment layer, hold Alt and click and drag the layer mask from down below over and onto our selective color adjustment, effectively targeting the same shadowy region on Cynthia's skin that we have since fixed in secret number one. From here, you can simply proceed to click into the red tab to target the skin. Quick tip, targeting the color red will always target your model skin tone, regardless of the ethnicity or skin type that you might be working with. And this is because all skin pigment is based on the color red. With the red tab selected, all you have to do is drag this cyan slider to the left to increase the reds in the skin since red is the opposite of cyan, so what we're doing is pouring in negative cyan, which technically equates to a positive red value. Increasing the reds in the skin in this way will help to bring back a lot of color in our recovered shadowy region. 
And then what you can do is just play around with these dials over here until the skin tones in this area start to look more natural or simply blend better with the skin color on the left side of Cynthia's face. So with that done, let's now go ahead and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Once again, feel free to copy over the layer mask from down below to target the shadowy region and then proceed to increase the saturation by shifting this slider to the right, as well as bump up the lightness or brightness of the colors in the shadows by shifting this slider to the right slightly. Now, this shadowy region is starting to look much better and much more blended with the rest of the colors in Cynthia's skin. So now that we've recovered the underexposure and colors on the shadowy side of Cynthia's face, now it's time to move on to secret number three, which is all about perfecting and enhancing the skin tones on the entirety of Cynthia's skin as a whole. And the first thing we want to do is create a hue and saturation adjustment layer and begin by clicking into the reds to target all of Cynthia's skin tones as a whole and then dragging this saturation slider to the right to create a skin tone vibrancy boost. From here, let's go ahead and remove some of the harsher unflattering reds by dragging the hue slider to the right slightly. Now, because we've increased the saturation of the skin tones alone, let's also go ahead and increase the saturation of all the colors in frame, just to balance out or blend in our skin tone vibrancy boost with the rest of our photo. Let's add in one more enhancement to the base of our skin tones using the selective color tool. And so what we want to do with our selective color tool is click into the reds to once again target the skin tones and then proceed to subtly reduce some of these unnatural saturated yellows coming through by dragging this slider to the left and then feel free to add in a pinch of magenta and red tones to give Cynthia a healthy rosy blush, which is pretty common in a lot of her photos on Instagram. And speaking of Instagram, a useful hack that you can use is to take a look at your model's Instagram photos and use those images as a reference when refining and perfecting your model's skin tones in order to get the colors looking more natural and accurate to life. And as you can see in Cynthia's feed, her typical skin tone is generally a bright pinkish beige color. And so that's exactly what we're going to be targeting when we use the camera raw filter in our next skin tone enhancement step. So let's go ahead now and do just that by first creating a stamp of all visible underlying layers by hitting shift plus command plus option plus N and then shift plus command plus option plus E. Let's right click this layer and then select create smart object so as to work non-destructively. Next, let's head on over to filter camera raw filter. Once inside, let's go ahead and jump right into getting the skin highlights looking closer to the brighter pinkish target color that we saw earlier by first dragging the white balance temperature to a cooler negative 14 and then bumping the tint to a more pinky magenta of plus 12. To make the skin tones brighter, let's go ahead and increase the exposure to positive 20, bump up the whites to plus 22 and increase the shadows to plus one and the blacks to positive eight. Now, with all this brightening, we've lost a decent amount of detail in the highlights. So let's go ahead and drag this slider to about negative 58 to restore some of that beautiful skin texture visibility in Cynthia's skin. In addition to a loss of detail in the highlights, an increase in skin brightening has also desaturated a lot of the colors in the skin. So let's bring those back up by scrolling down to the vibrance and saturation sliders and bumping those up to positive 17 and plus two respectively. With that done, let's now jump into the color mixer tab and make a few more color refinements to the skin by first clicking into the hue sub tab and shifting the reds to negative five, as well as the oranges to plus one. Let's jump into the saturation sub tab and boost both the reds and the oranges to positive 18 and positive six. And let's also reduce those saturated yellows to negative 25. Let's click into the luminance sub tab and brighten up the oranges to plus four. So in this case, because we're working with predominantly golden yellow tones in the skin, a great way to balance out these yellows whilst creating an aesthetically pleasing complementary color palette that pops is to introduce more purple tones into the image. As you can see by coming down to this little in-house color wheel, purple is the opposite of yellow. And a quick way to introduce more purple into your image is to come on over to the hue sub tab and then click and drag the aquas, blues, magenta, and purple sliders to the right, thus successfully introducing more purple tones into your image. Let's also go ahead and bump up the saturation of these purples slightly by dragging this purple slider to positive 10. 
With that done, let's hit OK and then scroll down to our original photo to take a look at a before and after, before and after. Okay guys, so there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and are now feeling inspired by all the new Photoshop techniques and methods that you can use to create perfect skin tones in your own work. If you did, please hit that like button and let me know in the comments down below. I always love to hear from you. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so so that you don't miss another future video. Take care for now.